Assalamualaikum to Prof. my dear Dr. Abdullah. My name is Umi Zulaika binti Zuliskanda with metric number 71855 and we are from group 37. Today, I would like to present about our product selection for manufacturing process is piston. First, I will present about what is manufacturing process, product description, flow process, defect of the manufacturing process, design consideration and analyze the manufacturing process. This is introduction of manufacturing process. Manufacturing process are made by hand and have three elements that the main is design, selecting material and manufacturing process. This process is from raw material to production as piston. So today, me and Fakru Razi would like to present about casting process, training process, metal and non-metal forming process of a piston. Product description. The first picture is a raw material for the piston and the piston I use aluminium solid rod. The process that involve that involved to make a piston is casting process, training process, metal and non-metal forming process. The second picture I show the finished product of car piston that go through all the manufacturing process. I will present part of casting process and joining process. For this part, I will I will present about flow process of casting process. For this process, we are choose send casting process to make a connecting rod. Connecting rod is a part of the piston and it was joined between the piston head and rod cap. We choose same casting process because it was the easy process rather than another casting process. For this casting process has various tools such as hand wheel, shovel, ramus and sprue pin. The first step of sand casting is place small pattern to mold that have filled with a sand. Then we use a ramus to remove the excess sand from the sand box. Then step 2 is construct getting system of the sand casting. This purpose to guide the molten metal from the ladle to the casting cavity and full filling into the mold of the connecting rod. That step is the pattern of the connecting rod are removed from the sand box. Two boxes are open and the pattern is removed with help of the draw spike. Why this pattern are removed? Because inside the sand it already has the shape of the connecting rod. Fourth step is pouring metal, metal, metal into the cavity of the mold. This step use a sprue pin to make a hole in the sand to make it easier to pour motor metals. For this motor metal, we use aluminum alloy with melting temperature around 660 degrees Celsius. The next step is metal cooling down. We must wait for the metal to cool down after we pour the molten cast aluminum alloy into the mold of the connecting rod. This part will take time based on the materials that we use. Last step is remove the metal casting from the sand mold. After the metal is cooled down, we can remove it from the sand mold to see the finishing of the product. Then, the connecting rod will be cleaned by a fiber brush and use a grinding to remove the excess molten metal on the connecting rod. This is the picture of process of the sand casting like what I have explained before. I would like to share with Prof some video from the YouTube that we get in the next slide.
is flow process for the draining process. This process, we are choose the mechanical drain or other name is fastener draining process. Mechanical drain is widely used for the part of draining of two or more metals part in temporarily or permanently. For our product, we are used temporarily draining that involve drilling, bolting, and pin that we use wrist pin or gorgeon pin. The first step is drilling. We need to drill a hole in both sides of the connecting rod to drain it with the bolt and nut. Firstly, we need to make a center drilling for the big end bolts by using size 10 mm of the drill tools. After that, we drilling both sides of the bolts holes using the size 3 mm. The second step is bolting and pin drain. For the bolting part, we are use hurricane bolt to link the connecting rod with rod cap and these bolts are strong rather than other bolts for draining this product. For the pin part, we use the wrist pin or other name gorgeon pin that connect the piston head to the connecting rod. This pin prevents the cylinder wall from scoring. Next slide. I will present about defect in sand casting and joining process. Defect in sand casting is unfilled section when finishing occur. This is caused by materials are not really molten with the specification of the temperature for the sum of the materials. The defect can reduce is make sure the molten cast aluminum alloys is perfect molten with the temperature in 60, 660 degrees Celsius and the materials is enough to produce a medium or big product like a connecting rod. The second defect is porosity. Porosity is caused by the temperature of the melt is too high than 660 degrees Celsius for aluminum alloy and the permeability of sand is poor with the high moisture. The, por the porosity can reduce by control the temperature of the molten metals being poured into the mold sand and reducing the moisture of the sand. Then, surface projections not smooth is a part of defect in sand casting. This causes by the interior sand mold erosion because of sand mold is not dense and maybe had something inside the sand mold. This defect we can reduce is the sand mold are really dense with the product mold and the sand must be used hand riddle to separate between the sand and other things such as a small stone. This is the example for the defect in sand casting. This is defect from the joining process. The defect of joining process is stress stress and strain in connecting rod with rod cap and the piston head in bolting and pin gen. This defect, we can mini minimize it by ensuring sufficient thread commitment in the construction of the fastener and use the specification of the bolts and pin that suitable with the hole of the connecting rod, such as for alloy, the proof stress, we use head 130 megapascal and tensile stress is 1030 megapascal. It can be higher from the value of the proof stress and tensile stress. This can make our product is broken. Design consideration for sand casting process. It has four for the design consideration that we need to take note. First is drawing of connecting road, just as our product is connecting connecting road. The draft of the drawing should have a size and shape of the product that we need to produce. Second, tolerance level. This part is important to produce some products such as we use aluminum alloy to produce the connecting rod with the tolerance level for these materials is more or less 0.5 mm. Third, alloy selection for our products such as we choose aluminum alloy for our connecting rods. This consideration should have a strength of the materials, durability, toughness of the materials, and the corrosion resistance for our materials when we finish produce the product. Lastly, is inspection of the surface. This part makes sure our product not have more defects or error on it. The design consideration of training process is 
Modularity for product design stresses our product is piston and the higher quality components. This is continued from the before slide. For the modularity, for product, uh, for product design is the amount of different function is increasing so the automatic assembly device completes reduce the system reliability. For the design consideration in high quality component is to join the connecting rod with rod cap, we use the hurricane bolt better than other bolt and it very strong join of two parts of the product. And when we use the low quality components, the join of two parts will be addition to each other and make the resulting product in downtime. Last section for my part about cost engineering process is analyze the, the, the both of the process. For the casting process, our product can be optimized with the low tooling cost of the process and the versatile shape with the weight of the product. This is because the tools of the casting process can find at any hardware store such as hand needle, shovel, sand that we use for the mold and molten material such as aluminum alloy. For the versatile shape, for the versatile shape, and where is we can design or draw for our product such as gear, connecting roads and other components. The draining process can be optimized by a low cost production of the product such as the production is performed by manually or automatically by a robot to join two or more of the components part like bolting drain and connecting road with the road cap. This can help the manufacturing save their cost and their time to produce the part that used by the bolting, drain, welding process, and soldering. So, that's it for my part of casting and joining process. I will give the next part about metal and non-metal forming pro process to the next presenter is Muhammad Fakrulazi. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. My name is Muhammad Fakhrul Razi bin Muhammad Helmi with matrix number 72408. First of all, I would like to thank Zulaika for presenting the first part of our project which is on the casting process and joining process. In the second part of the presentations, I am going to present to you about the metal and non-metal forming process. Clearly, the differences between these two process is the material used in the process. Usually, in a metal forming process, we are using a materials that has um, a characteristic of metal. For example, aluminum and steel. For a non-metal forming process, we are using plastic. Metal forming process. Our group has selected to use a fogging process, which is a process under metal forming process, in the making of piston. Here, we can see that there are several parts in a piston. A piston consists of piston head or crown, top compression ring, oil scraper ring, oil control ring or oil ring, piston pin and piston skirt. In the next slide, I will explain to you all of the piston parts. Parts of a piston. The first one is piston crown. Piston crown is top surface of the piston which is subjected to tremendous forces and heat during normal engine operation. Next, a compression ring. A compression ring is located at the top side of the piston nearer the combustion chamber and it is prevents the combustion gases from leakage. After that, oil scraper rings. It is located in the middle of compression rings and the oil rings. The function of oil scraper rings is it works in sealing the combustion chamber. 
Lastly, piston skirt. It is located closest to the crankshaft that helps align the piston as it is moved in the cylinder bore. We have come to the interesting part of this presentation. As you guys can see, here is the piston manufacturing process. In the first process, which is the material selection, we are required to choose a material that is suitable to create a piston. For our group, we have selected um, a piston that is made from aluminium alloy. The reason we choose aluminium is that it is a lightweight, uh, rust proof and easy to cut. After we have selected a material that we are going to use, then we need to cut it into a small pieces or slugs using a saw. In the punch process, we are applying a deep drawing process to shape the slug. A punch press and die are preheated while the slug moves through an oven and heating it to 4 to 6 degrees Celsius as the punch press. The slug is then removed from the oven and placed into the punch. The oven process. After fogging cool down, the slug goes through an oven twice more. The first one is at higher temperature, which is to strengthen the metal. And for the second time, they are put in low temperature to stabilize it. In the respin holes and oil control holes process, a large hole is drilled through both sides of the piston. And oil control holes are drilled along the slug. After that, by using a large machine, three ring grooves are created. After ring grooves are created, a milling machine is used to shape up to a couple of centimeters of, of each side of the piston where the large holes were drilled for the wrist pin insertion. After that, a piston is grinded from its head to give the crown the shape required according to the design. Lastly, before the piston is ready to use, they need to go through finishing process. For a non-metal forming process, we have selected to create a plastic piston ring. The process is the same in the making of connecting rod. It's just the difference is we use a liquid plastic to create the piston ring. Usually, a plastic piston ring is suitable for a co compressor um, piston. For a cup piston, we need to use a piston ring that is made from steel or iron. Here is the defects uh, that is caused by metal forming process and the prevention. For the first one, there are variations in the size of the piston due to the temperature of piston is not maintained accurately during process. To prevent it, a coolant should be changed and maintained at a constant temperature. Next, tool grinding leads to deep cut or improper surface finishing. To prevent it, tool has to be grinded or changed whenever it is ne necessary. Lastly, the speed of machine is not constant which causes improper machining on the surface of piston. To avoid this, the operator should follow the SOP st strictly and have some training. This is the presentations of the defect and preventions on the non-metal forming process. The first one is piston rings may break due to some finishing required in the casting process of non-metal forming process. The 
Solution that we can take is change the plastic material to steel or silicon cast iron. After that, a piston ring might unbalance because of the diameter and size is not constant. To prevent this, make sure the properties of material is known and take known on the tensile strength and plastic deformations of the material. Next, we are going to talk about the design considerations for metal and non-metal forming process. In a metal forming process, there are two considerations that we can make. The first one is accurate positioning of the slugs in the die cavity. This is to get a constant thickness of the piston so that the piston does not have any defects due to the unbalance. After that, a material use. The selection of material is very important in order to create the piston. The properties of materials should be considered such as the melting point and ultimate thin size strength. For a non-metal forming process, the first one is section size and shapes should be selected properly. This is because a plastic has much lower stiffness and strength as compared to metals. After that, for the thickness, large variation in the thickness should be avoided to achieve proper shape generation. These are the considerations that we should take note so that a good quality product can be produced. Lastly, we are going to talk about the optimizations on the metal and non-metal forming process. The first one is a planning process. This process is very important for us to, to select a suitable material in the manufacturing process. By doing a planning process, we have an advantage to save cost. After that, we can have a scheduled process. This is to minimize production times and to minimize cost. The second point is especially for the non-metal forming process. This is because the process we use in here is sand casting. Usually a sand casting process will take much time as compared to the other process. So by schedule process, we can minimize time and, and improve the number of production. In the next slide, we are going to watch a video on the piston manufacturing process. Ten thousand horsepower, zero to two hundred miles per hour in two point two seconds. 11.2 gallons of fuel consumed per second. A top fuel dragster is one of the fastest accelerating vehicles on Earth. How does it achieve such amazing speeds? It converts all of the energy in the fuel into mechanical energy through combustion. The part of the engine responsible for converting this energy is called the piston. A piston starts its life as a raw ingot of aluminum. It is cut by a circulating saw into smaller pieces about seven centimeters long. This ingot is then preheated to 420 degrees Celsius and placed in a forging machine. This machine deforms the ingot into a shape that begins to resemble a piston. Next, the pistons go into an oven for a stress relieving heat treatment before being placed on a lathe. The lathe machines the top and sides of the piston. Oil holes are drilled in the side skirts. Then it goes back into a lathe where the piston ring grooves are machined. Next, the piston pin holes are bored and the piston gets relief milled into the side skirts. 
Lastly, the head of the piston is machined the correct shape to match the combustion chamber. This is done on a multi-axis CNC mill. Once completed, multiple pistons can work together to do some amazing things. That is all from us. We would like to thank everyone for watching our video. Hopefully everyone is doing good and have a nice day. Thank you.